below. This is just a short video for a power supply that I currently purchased from AliExpress. It is a 480 watts, 300 volt output, 1.6 amps max power supply, switch mode power supply. It is a quite cheap power supply, but it's okay for that price. It includes a voltage display and a current display. The regulation is done through two multi-turn pots but they're not real bad. It's Bochen, at least not some uh, fake burns. The, the reason that I'm doing this video, that is not planned at all, is, is because this power supply, even that it has a really high power output and high voltage output, it has some bad flaws, had some bad flaws. Uh, I found some bad problems with that. Just for the history, um, buying regularly power supplies either high powered or high voltage power supplies from China just to check them to see the build the build quality and to see if they are suitable for everyday usage and yeah and see in, in, in terms of security safety uh, this time it is a high voltage power supplies because I'm designing quite a lot of high voltage power supplies and I wanted to see how this does with some tube transmitters I'm designing. The first thing I do when I get uh, such a power supply is to check it optically and probably completely reverse engineer it as I did with that. This, this Power supply is completely reverse engineered. Uh, I, just, I made it schematic in, in Eagle just to see what they did and how much corners they cut. Because, to be honest, I cannot await a high quality power supply for, I don't know, 70 US dollars shipped and including the VAT that we have to pay here in Europe when goods come from China. Just uh, for the beginning, uh, yeah, I test, of course, all the high voltage supplies and everything that has to do with tubes is connected to my uh, designed or upgraded uh, isolation power transformer and variac that is current limited. But this is another, this will be another video. It, the design of this. Uh, a short walkthrough of this power supply. It is a typical built switch mode power supply closed frame for this price. Uh, from what I see, the PCB is, a, is a, a generic PCB that is used in at least all the 480 watt power supplies they produce. You have, it starts with the input, filtering, full bridge rectifying, uh, 110, 220 volt switch, at 220 it's a full wave rectifier, in, in with 110 and less, it, or not less, 110 is a, is a doubler, using these capacitors, then you have the switching MOSFETs, driving circuit, the driver itself. It's a half bridge power supply. That's a DC blocking capacitor here. Then you have some snubber power transformer. The, uh, the output chock that is on the ground side to eliminate making it an antenna. Then you have two quite beefy double uh, diodes that are absolutely not needed for that and the output circuitry. And here you see three capacitors. There was three capacitors. And this is where the problem is. When I started testing this supply, after a few seconds, the onboard and permitter showed me, started to show me current when absolutely no load was on the output. 
and went up to 60 milliamperes. That's a lot. That's almost 25 watts power 300 volt uh, 300 volts and this is not from this resistor or from this LED because this is maximum uh, 3 milliamperes both uh, or each I started checking the capacitors and they were labeled mm, like that GCCon didn't find anything about that and yeah, and 105 degrees and low ASR, 70, 47 microfarads, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I know that this, the most of this capacitor, they cut corners wherever it's possible. And most of these capacitors are repurposed, reused, just pulled from scrap, uh, old scrap uh, PCBs and put a new sleeve on it. And that's it. I have no problems with that as long as it works and it is not getting dangerous. When I one of the capacitors was different than the others, it it had on this sleeve here just uh, like a bubble, and it didn't feel well because the first thing I do is to check the capacitors and touch them to see if there are any bumps or anything because when they take it out from the scrap PCBs they are not very gentle. They take it with, with uh, pliers, pull it out and that's it. The one that survives is okay, the one that doesn't survive is thrown away. And this is the one that has a, prob has a problem. This is one that is not being pulled out gentle at all. This thing has a hole. Yeah. And as soon as a little, it gets a little warm, starting to pull current. You can imagine what will happen if I will use, if I will add some load at the output and the ripple current will start, we will, will rise. This is a fire hazard. So, again, I have no problems when they cut corners or they try to make it as cheap as possible, because the whole thing is cheap. Yeah. Look at the design. The design is here. You have here the transformer and here the switching transistors. This is a distance of at least 10 centimeters. And this is the high current switching path, primary path. On the back side, you see how long the tracks are here. This is the reason that probably they try to screen the controller and the controller circuitry using this traces, this ground traces to screen a little bit from from this high current path traces. Here you see the same. Yeah, not a good design at all. Far too far. Anyway, it is a it is a generic design. You see it here and the shunts. These are the two shunts. Look how thick they are. Nobody needs that thick shunt and two of them in parallel for 1.6 amps. That means this is an absolutely generic design that is used in at least all their 480 watt power supply. Look at the, the output copper pour. Nobody needs that for 1.6 amps. Yeah? Anyway. yeah, this thing is working. The good thing is that at least they use a plastic isol insulation at the bottom. This is not at all those, these cheap power supplies. It has an, an, an uh, fan that this is good too, that it doesn't run all the time like on the other power supplies. It is controlled by an <laughs> a very very simple circuit. It's controlled via this uh, temperature switch that is put inside the output chock. If this thing gets warm enough, the switch cuts, the switch closes and starts the, the fan. Yeah, but I forgot to say, it, and they use a dedicated switch mode power supply here that shares the primary side with the, with the main primary voltage. It has two outputs. This is good again. The one output is for the 
um, for the controller electronics and the other output is for the uh, for powering the, the the meters and the fan so at least your the fan noise is isolated from the rest of the controller electronics yeah uh, of course using this kind of shunts in two in parallel you're working in millivolt ranges that means you are working at full load at i don't know something like 70 millivolts or something and they go all this way here instead of putting in an, an op amp taking the millivolt if they want to use this 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 uh, uh, this shunts to multiply the, the, the output of the, of the shunts at least by 10 to have some higher voltages, higher levels to go there and not with, milli, milli, with millivolts. No. This is cheap and you can see this is a generic. They have the, they have the components and they use it for everything even if it's not needed. So probably uh, again used and repurposed from something else. Uh, yeah, the solution is using three high quality output capacitors. It's the KXJ series of Nippon Chemicon, high ripple current capacitors, high quality. <laughs> and even that this one say low ASR, state low ASR, sorry my ass, this is absolutely bullshit. Yeah? Uh, the Nippon Chemicon capacitors, tested at the same frequency at 120 hertz have even a lower uh, ESR even though they are not stated low ESR than the built-in so this is the built-in stuff is absolutely garbage yeah. be careful with that because this is one of the biggest problems with these power supplies yeah I will install this test it and let's see what happens probably the problem will be solved. Just a little info about this. This is the series. They have a lot of power supplies. They have good sides and bad sides. Be careful with the output capacity. Okay, wish you a nice day. Bye.